five incredible features that make Arturia's LX24 an incredible reverb. Eight beautifully emulated algorithms with three different converter types at your disposal. The mode enhancement feature modulates the algorithm time delay, giving it noticeably warmer sound, which is one of the original 224's sought after features. The decay optimization makes the decay feel more natural by altering the internal parameters that respond to changes in the input level. There's a really robust dynamic module with built-in ducker, tremolo, and gate options with an external sidechain capability for the ducker and gate. And then there's the graphical display. All of these parameters are the ones found on the main page, and the line graph here is the input signal, and the cloud is the reverb. In this video, we're going to check all of that out in detail. It's all coming up, so let's get into it. All right, so we're just going to jump right in and listen to this reverb in action. I know that's what you want to hear before I talk about different aspects of the plugin itself. So let's do that. I'm going to go ahead. This is the vocal that we're working with. I'm begging you. And now we're going to check out each of the eight algorithms with each of the three different converter types. So we're going to start with small concert B on Vintage 12 and then go to 24, then modern, and then go to the next algorithm and do it for all of them. Ready? Go. I'm begging you 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 All right, there you go. That's all of the algorithms with all of the different bit converter emulations on the same audio file so you get a good idea of what's happening. Now, or character of the sound. Anyway, what you may have noticed as I was flipping through those different algorithms, you can do it right now on the screen, check out these faders or sliders. As I move them, those move as well. The decay, bass offset, crossover, damping, and, dis and distance move depending on the algorithm. Now, the cool thing about that, ladies and gentlemen, is that is Arturia saying to you that it when you switch the algorithm and it moves those for you, if you leave them there, you are going to get the closest emulation of the original hardware unit that you can get. So there's no guessing. They're saying, listen, leave that there. 
uh, all other things considered, that is as close as you're going to get to the original unit. And I think that is so cool. Now, we've got a ton of other great stuff here, and I'm just going to cover the five things that we already talked about. We've got the different algorithms, as I said, the eight of them, and then we've got our different bit converters. And let's flip over to the advanced panel, which I think is pretty cool. When I'm hovering over on the advanced panel, we actually get more of a hint down here or uh, and a tool tip. So on the Vintage 12, we've got a filtered 12-bit converter. Uh, Vintage 24 is a filtered 24-bit converter. And then a modern is a unfiltered 24-bit converter. So it's ultra clean, full spectrum. Um, you're going to get lots of high end. But I would say I prefer the vintage 12 and 24, even though I never had an original hardware unit, it just sounds so much better. So all of these parameters here are mimicking or are the same as the ones down here at the bottom. Flip through some of these algorithms, you'll see how those are updating and how they're tweaking the sound. I'm begging you. So what I'm gonna do is actually pull up all the way wet so we can just hear the reverb for a second and play with some of these parameters to see what it does to the reverb sound. I'm up down is going to be your decay time. The left right is the crossover position for the bass offset. I'm begging you. And by the way, the line graph here is the actual incoming signal. And then the sort of glowing uh, fog, as it were, is the reverb tail. So if I have a longer reverb tail, you'll see that the line graph gets out of the way. And when the reverb's still there, you'll still see that visually as well as hear it. I'm go up to 70 seconds. I'm you. Very cool. Now we also have a damping control over here and we can control when that starts to sort of uh, kill the upper end of the frequency spectrum. I'm we can think of it like muffling. Uh, it might be a better adjective if you are not familiar with the term dampening. Term, term. I'm we also have the distance control, which is the idea that sometimes if you're in a large space, the reverb will take a second to hit the wall and then bounce back, which will give you sort of, uh, this is just emulating that to give you a sense of space. I'm so you can almost, it's almost like a pre-delay, but it's not quite a pre-delay. You do have a pre-delay, which is over here on this side. So with this really long tail, I can pull it down a little bit. That's, that's a little bit too much. Um, with the really long tail now, let's listen to the different bit converters and see how they transform the sound. And it's a lot. I'm going to come into acoustic chamber. Actually, let's leave the damping totally open. And let's just hear the Vintage 24 now. Do you hear the drastic difference, especially between the vintage ones and the modern? You're going to get that with all of the different eight algorithms. So 24 different combinations there. It's fantastic. Now, the next cool thing I want to talk about is the mode enhancement option, which is right here. And again, these are all can be turned on or off right here in the front. But if you want to be able to tweak the strength, you have to come into the advanced. Lower values are more and higher values are less. <laughs> You hear a little bit of fluttering there? That's the mode enhancement. What it does is offsets the decay time a little bit at the end, which is just kind of more natural if you're in an actual environment. It just enhances the quality of the reverb and makes it feel more real, if that makes sense. When this is, oh, by the way, you can toggle that on or off here in the advanced panel as well as the front. When you have that on, you then have access to this pitch shift option, which is just an additional bonus feature. And if I crank this up around four or five, you'll start to get phasing, uh, like a phasing effect or a chorusing effect in the reverb tail, which is just another way to give it realism and really interesting sound. Do you hear the subtle pitch fluctuation there? Watch what happens when I really crank it up. You'll, it's unmistakable. I'm 
It's it's almost like a wow or flutter effect on your reverb tail. So use with caution, but I mean, put a little bit on it. Why not? Make things spicy. And we got to remember, um, I'm just doing a lot of these videos and demos so you can really hear things, but I would never have it. Like, it's 100% wet on the vocal. It would never be that way. It'd probably be down here around 20 to 30%. More than not, well, often than not, I'd have a reverb on my return track, but for demonstration purposes. I'm begging you. So obviously it sounds fantastic there, uh, but you don't, can't hear, really hear the pitch fluctuation on the lower level. Uh, you can just hear it better when it's 100% dry. That's why I do that in these videos, and I hope it's appreciated. Let me know in the comments. Now, we also have a decay optimization. Again, can be bypassed here with a strength value. And just like the modulation enhancer, the lower values are stronger with upper ones are a little bit weaker. Uh, they'll still be there, but you can bypass it if you want to click it on or off. And what this does is actually manipulates the internal parameters of the plugin to make things sound more realistic. And it's almost like an envelope follower in that it's dependent on the incoming audio signal. So if you use this on a vocal and then use it on something like drums, you're gonna get vastly different results. But either way, I would suggest using it because it's just gonna give you more pleasant, natural, realistic sounding reverb. Phenomenal, phenomenal. I'm begging. Again, let's put it up to 100% wet. Let's bring that pitch off. And moving on from there, we're going to talk about the dynamic section. So I've said in a number of videos and live streams that ducking your reverb out of the way of something like a vocal where you need it to be pristine is absolutely essential. There are ways to do it outside of a plugin, but it's 2023 and new reverbs that are being made today should definitely have it built in, and this one does, but it's gone the extra mile. Oh, bless the people at Arturia. So we got the ducker. We can turn it on, and it's just going to work just like you thought. So if I bring my dry wet back down to something more reasonable, when the vocal crosses the threshold that we can set here in the plugin, it will automatically duck the reverb tail, push it down depending on our ratio, and then let it come back in depending on the release once the vocal is done. I'm begging you. You see? Let's really crank up the decay. I'm begging you. You hear how it comes back in? How fast it comes back in is the release. How far it goes down is the ratio. I'm begging you. I'm begging you. So something like a 10 is really going to push it down and away. And, you know, the threshold, this is pretty... A pretty compressed vocal, so we don't have too much to worry about there. But on something like drums, it's really going to, or a full drum kit, if you think about a hi-hat versus a kick, it's really going to take effect and really be noticeable. Now, the ducker is fantastic, but we also have a tremolo effect. I'm begging you. So it's almost like a ducker, but instead we now have shapes. So in instead of being dependent on the incoming signal or more dynamic, we can choose it on something like a really nice sine wave. I'm begging you. Isn't that cool? Now there's also a gate effect. This one is gonna just turn it off or turn it on depending on the threshold. I'm begging you. 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 And finally, there's the graphic display, which can be turned on or off. We've kind of already gone through that uh, during the course of this video. It's already pretty long, but definitely check this reverb out. I don't know if I already mentioned this, but all of the new plugins in the effects bundle four 
or f effects collection four from Arturia. So just all of the effects Arturia have now are resizable, which I think is fantastic. And they all look and sound phenomenal. So links to everything as usual are in the video description. I'm Joshua Casper, and I'll see you in the next video.